Ambient occlusion is a shading method that helps add realism to your objects by taking into account attenuation of light due to occlusion. Okay, what it does is it, it's kind of like a, a crude version of global illumination and it can add lots of nice little detail in the cracks and crevices and where two objects meet. And, uh, and what I thought we could do is take a look at how to set it up, how to use it, and uh, some, some possible uses for it. So um, I'm in, this, uh, in this video, I'm going to use this Mech Warrior built by Farrah Welch. And uh, it's a great object to work with because it's got all these little areas that the ambient occlusion can take advantage of. Okay, so let's start by just um, taking a look at what ambient occlusion is going to do. If I do a, a quick render... Uh, we can see um, the object without any shaders. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom into an area and do a render just so we can really see. Okay, so here's what we have um, by default. Now, if I'm gonna use the ambient occlusion, I, I'm gonna need some kind of shadow. So I'm gonna go to Render, Render Globals, and turn on Ray Trace Shadows. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the surface editor. And there's one surface on this uh, this object just to keep things simple. I'm going to edit nodes. I'm going to make sure that the uh, nodes are active and then come over to add node, shaders, diffuse, and you've got occlusion and occlusion 2. They're just two different setups. Occlusion 2 has more options. Um, if we, I'm just going to put both of them out here and you get, um, you get different results from, from each, but for the most part we're going to be using occlusion 2 uh, and here's occlusion. Uh, but you should try out each because each give uh, different results. So I'm going to head over and plug this right into the diffuse uh, and it's going to convert the RGB uh, data to a scalar value. So I'm going to do a quick render and as you can see we've got all the shading going on now it's a little noisy if we up the anti-aliasing and up the uh, samples that we can uh, we can kind of clean that up a bit but what we're seeing is it's almost like dirt and grime has uh, gone where the geometry is meeting and where these uh, creases and crevices are and it's a great way to um, to give kind of that uh, global illumination look but also to, to add those kind of details in to, to the areas let's go to one other area to to take a look at just to see what's going on okay Here's another example where you can see uh, we've got, it looks like, where rust or dirt and grime would, uh, would collect. Um, so it can be used uh, simply as that. You do your regular um, uh, surfacing and then add the ambient occlusion node and you're, you're uh, up and going with some extra little detail. Now, one, well, let's actually take a look at how we could do that. I'm going to just unplug this for a second. And I'm going to go and add turbulence. And I'm going to go kind of crazy with the colors just so that we can see uh, without a doubt what's going on. I'm going to go with this bright uh, bright red. And for size, I need to, I need to size this down. And I'm going to plug that into the color and let's do a quick render. Okay. And I've got it everywhere. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the occlusion node and instead of plugging that into opacity, I want the exact opposite. So I'm going to go grab an invert node, plug this in here, this in here. Okay. And let's do a render. Okay. So I've, I've started adding rust to my, to my object here. I'm going to do one more render just so we can see the whole, the whole thing. Okay. So where rust might collect, I've got some nice little rust stains on my object. And I was able to quickly place it, um, you know, plugging that ambient occlusion into the opacity is, uh, is a quick way of, yeah, see, here's a, here's a good example of where we could just put, um, instead of randomly placing rust, we can, we can put it where uh, we want. I mean, that could be dirt and grime as well. Um, so that's a quick, uh, a quick way of adding it. And, uh, ambient occlusion made it, made it pretty, 
pretty easy. So um, what we can also do is use the ambient occlusion uh, node. Uh, we can use that to build our occlusion pass. Now we're going to set up the scene a little different uh, to do that, but uh, it's uh, pretty harmless. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just throw that out of the way. And I'm going to unplug, well actually I can keep that plugged in, but I'm going to plug this into the diffuse shading and that's going to kind of take over from this so that this is kind of worthless right now and I'm just going to use uh, the ambient occlusion node into the diffuse shading. If I were to do a render of this we'll get a, a basic idea. Okay, uh, But what I want is uh, I want to get a, a real nice occlusion pass so um, I'm going to go over to my light properties panel and I'm going to turn ambient uh, the ambient intensity up to 100. I'm going to turn my light off. Okay. So now that I have this up to 100, the whole object is being lit from from all directions, and uh, we don't need that that light. Okay. I'm going to go over to my backdrop, which is Control F5, and change that to white. Okay. And bring this back to a render. Okay, and I'm starting to get my occlusion pass that I can use in compositing right there. Now again, a little noisy, but I don't have anti-aliasing on just for this video to so it runs a little uh, faster for us to see. Uh, I can also um, up the samples and uh, it gives us um, something that looks similar to global illumination but again remember this is a crude approximation of full global illumination uh, but it can be pretty fast. Now with um, final gather radiosity you might find that, that uh, you might see that speed isn't an issue uh, when it comes to uh, to working with that but uh, as you can see we could also use the um, ambient occlusion node just to add that that nice little detail where uh, when we were working on the the tofu the vegan zombie animated short uh, we used the ambient occlusion to uh, help kind of fine-tune where the walls met the uh, the floor and where the molding was it just added that nice little shading that nice little um, shadow that we could uh, help kind of really give it that that nice 3d depth and also again I'm a big fan of adding dirt and grime and and uh, rust and, and things to that so whether you're wanting to just do an ambient occlusion pass or add details to your surfaces uh, but but put them in strategic places the ambient occlusion node could be um, could be the solution for you and remember you've got a couple options we can always go to the um, uh, we can go to the node editor and choose occlusion 2 we could add occlusion and if you want to you don't even have to go into the node editor uh, though um, that's a scary thought for me I'm, I'm really loving the node editor but we could just come over to shaders come over to gmail and um, set up occlusion here as well just uh, in this case we would want occlusion in uh, occlusion diffusion uh, to turn that on okay so Again, just a quick look at using the occlusion nodes um, for ambient occlusion in the node editor. And we got a little sneak peek of Gmail as well. And, uh, and there you go.